what is private equity and venture capital and private investors and yeah. do angel investors yeah yeah so all of that is a class of capital that is not commercial so tunapongea commercial capital at least in the finance world we distinguish it as the banking type right. of capital yeah, right. yeah, everyone knows mm -hmm. um, when you go to a bank to get a loan that's commercial facility right so the alternative is what we call private capital bio ni ya watu binafsi so there's a few distinctions for private capital the main distinction for private capital is that it invest in private companies it's not a person who is on the sidelines saying the doer of the deeds could have done yeah, better the credit belongs to the man in the arena Aha, classmates mkofiti we salimo tulisema tutafute bell yeah, before class in anza tuna ring bell well, i just want to thank long or not place for this amazing suit that they've given us to to shoot our conversations in thank you so much long or not place this place is amazing uh, if you if you have time just come out check out the rooms check out their rates ni watu amazing sana um also tasemaje big up to philip productions who are sponsoring this uh, particular conversation um, check out their website we have films there that we sell we have merchandise jibambeni kabisa check it out um man so excited about today's uh, teacher cuz uh, ananifunza kitu manze i have no idea about today we are going to talk about funding for businesses so we're going to talk about private equity angel investors all those things and i'm super excited cuz this honestly is one conversation na struggle nayo sana i've tried visiting a couple of vc firms na sijaelewa what i'm doing right or doing wrong so yeah so today we're joined by Eva she is the ceo of East Africa Venture Capital Association i hope i got that correct and i think there's no one in this country who knows best about venture capital than Eva so karibu sana thank you so much Phil uko fit kabisa nice uh -huh. to see you in a different setting in a different <laughs> yeah every time i see you you always sweaty in gym wear mtu yangu nachoma is day to unaweza oga hivi mtu yangu transformation tunaoganga we got that to look good first of all what are you running from you you always in the gym by is it 4:30 or 5 my i always find you in the gym <laughs> Uh, well that was in 2021 uh -huh. uh, <laughs> i have regressed since younger <laughs> six oh. uh, <laughs> like every time you uh, come to the gym it is worse oh when it rains it was you get that event okay <laughs> how have you been though very well it's thank been you it's been a minute Good to see exactly tuanzia tu hapa hivi what is private equity and venture capital and private investors and yeah. do angel investors yeah yeah so all of that is a class of capital that is not commercial so tunapongea commercial capital at least in the finance world we mm. distinguish it as the banking type right. of capital yeah, right. yeah, everyone knows mm -hmm. um, when you go to a bank to get a loan that's commercial facility right, right. so the alternative is what we call private capital bio mm -hmm ni ya watu binafsi okay. uh, or actually these institutions but mostly it it belongs to a, se a, a specific group of people right. uh, that they then put it pull it together to deploy into private companies so there's a few distinctions for private capital I set at private capital alafu I will break the okay. different types down no the the main distinction for private capital is that it invest in private companies okay, okay. so even though we have those a few that invest in listed companies the mm -hmm. biggest difference is that private capital pursues and supports private businesses right um so then you go into the different forms um starting from the base okay is angel investing angel right. investing is you and me mm -hmm. we have extra liquidity tunaona kuna business flani inatujenga iko na potential tunai support kama hii yako uja pitch lakini ni sawa um so we see an upcoming you see an upcoming business and it has a future and then we back that one a lot of the people doing angels do it out of their own personal money or my family money so that's the first level and we call it the first level because mara nyingi they come in before a business is fully mature in many instances this is a business that's even testing 
its mm. viability in the market. Right. And this is patient capital, familial capital that mm. can support that entity. Okay. And then the next level is probably the first interaction you get with institutions mm -hmm. uh, and this is venture capital venture capital invest in early stage businesses but it is institutional capital in that they have structures in place um, they have pulled money from different people whether it's individuals families or even corporate sometimes to invest specifically in early stage businesses however venture capital Require some level of experience for that business. Ningumu sana utaona, especially in our part of the world, kwamba mtu wamepata VC funding na hana what we call traction, hana track record, hana yeah. history, yeah. Yeah. especially yeah. around proving that your business is a sound product. Right. So VC is the first level you interact with money, commercial, uh, institutional money, mm -hmm. that is supposed to also help your business become a structured entity right so until family uh, angel where it's mostly family and friends apo akunanga structures most of the time wana kupatia tu dondo wakuskume to the next level yeah. in the next level is now where the serious questions do you have a board mm -hmm. if not they put that in place mm -hmm. um do you have audited accounts if not where are your weaknesses can we start getting like a finance manager come right. on now you start seeing the structures of mm -hmm. a business forming mm -hmm. vcs invest different levels um when as in gear before you make full profit or re pre revenue mm -hmm. that you, they call them pre series mm -hmm. and then once you get to the serious stages mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. send it a series rounds but i think is on some to know nanga copy pass someone has raised series a series b yeah. all the way i don't know how i think this is they get to series k yeah, yeah? um so unenda to kiongeza yeah okay and those are institutions now mm -hmm. once you become an established business mm -hmm. vc ideally transitions that business to a private equity fund right so vc is growth money mm -hmm. but for early stage companies okay private equity is growth money mm -hmm. for established businesses so vc is uh, the first level of corporate capital mm -hmm. um, once this business grows and venture capital the other thing that makes it fair is that they don't necessarily expect this company to be profitable when they're coming in but they will help you grow to profitability yeah so how do they recoup their money that's the part where it's also called patient capital all right. private capital is essentially patient capital right. the distinction between private capital and uh, banking is that you're not expected to start repaying immediately mm -hmm. so the other thing is we take shares so being an owner in the business we have a stake in making sure you succeed so we will stay there until we see the profitability mm -hmm. and that's the other difference with private uh, difference of private capital I feel like i'm all over the place but yeah, okay, no, no, so no, no, we've no, talked definitely. about it pulling yeah. money from yeah. individuals yeah. To, uh, or institutions to invest in private companies that mm -hmm. those are the two distinctions and then the third one is that um for the most part we do take a stake mm -hmm. in the businesses right and by virtue of taking that stake we become patient capital yeah. ndio maana hauna hiyo pressure ya ya ku kutana around na kulipa mtu mm -hmm. so vc um you asked how they make money that's mm -hmm. a whole conversation in itself mm -hmm. um as your business grows your valuation grows sivyo yeah so just yeah. to leave your hands even feel tv yeah. five yeah, i don't know how long you've been there but assuming yeah. five years yeah um your value today the equipment you have has contributed to your valuation yeah. so when i came in as a vc five years ago you didn't have this infrastructure right we have grown with you as you're building this infrastructure by the time i'm selling mm -hmm. my stake in Phil tv mm -hmm. i am going to count all of this as mm -hmm. value and this is what i'll say yeah. i have contributed this is what someone makes uh, is supposed to pay me yeah. for my stake in your business right. so when you ask how do they make money mm -hmm. they make money off the growth of the that enterprise can't. yeah sawa so but you as you're growing you're starting to become revenue positive on ingiza do sivyo yeah where's the charity hallelujah on ingiza do unapoingiza do at some point you break even you're yeah. covering your costs mm -hmm. so um, vc mm -hmm. they will grow with the businesses as you grow from maybe revenue negative you get to revenue positive after revenue pos positive we start looking at your profitability mm -hmm. are you able to self sustain as a company now once you get to profitability private equity companies now check in okay. so again vc is growth capital but for young mm -hmm. growing companies, companies yeah. private equity is private is cap is growth capital mm -hmm. but for mature sure. companies the distinction between vc and pe is pe does not invest in a company that's not 
profit profitable. Because, yeah, that's not profitable. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. the thing. And then PE normally insists on a mature, mature business. And mm -hmm. these days we define mature differently, okay. especially for tech companies. They grow very fast. Yeah. So once we get to that profit, profitable level, mm -hmm. then PE in India. Right. Ah, so PE, their idea is to help a mature business achieve scale. Mm. Yeah. Right. So you're growing, but it's not about scale. It's mm -hmm. expansion. It's acquisition. If Phil TV goes and acquires someone else to right. become a behemoth, right? Yeah. Um, it's entry into new markets, introducing new products, those kinds of growth strategies. That's where PE Basically, matches. Basically, what we're seeing with the Java's, Art Cafe's, Right. Quick so Mart's anyone neighbors, who is yeah. in Java, Art Cafe, Quick Mart, Avenue Hospital, that's a PE fund. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're really expanding. Yes. Oh, right. Yeah. Java, when they first got PE, they had seven Outlets today, they have about 45. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. that's the essence of PE growing. Mm -hmm. Ideally, PE exits to the market, mm -hmm. IPO. That's where now you become a publicly listed company. Right. Sadly, in Africa, it's not the trend as yeah. much for other different reasons mm -hmm. that I'm happy to get into, but maybe not now. Mm -hmm. um, but then they sell right. to one, either the IPO market, so public listing, mm -hmm. two, they can sell to strategics. Java gets acquired by ideal scenario. Yeah. Starbucks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So Starbucks is a strategic company. Right. They, yeah. So as an example, not to say that mm. that's and, what's yeah. happening because, yeah. wow, I should have <laughs> remembered that one state. Yeah. yeah. So they sell to the company to someone else that can then take it to a whole other level. Right. Yeah. So those are the different stages of capital. God damn. I, I mean, I didn't even know there were stages, but thank you. Okay. That's really clear. So how do I package myself? How do I package myself for an angel investor for a VC. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm very passionate about this when speaking to Kenyan entrepreneurs because one of the things that we have as a disadvantage of our education system is there was no course that came with this. I don't know if I'm business administration. Then you could look on a how to make a pitch. For sure. So and it somehow comes at a disadvantage for yeah. us when it comes to now selling our ideas. Mm -hmm. The first thing is, is your idea filling a gap? Mm -hmm. So everyone, especially being Kenyans, we are hustlers. Kila mtu wako na idea kumik income, save your. Right. But is that idea solving for a real need? Mm -hmm. Manake, where there's a real need, there's a real market. Right. Anything other than that is a hobby. So if you're solving for a real need, mm -hmm. producing local content is a real need because yeah. so much of our screen time is not local content. Yeah. So sure. you're feeling a need. Right? right. So if there's a need as an investor, me me see charity. As an investor, I know where there's a need, there's a market. Kunam to a measure na your need at a kuli peer. Yeah. So the first thing you when you ask how do I position myself is I have an idea, sure. Mm -hmm. I have a business plan, sure. Mm -hmm. If I can prove I'm solving for a need, mm -hmm. then you get the attention of the investor. So that's yeah. number one. Yeah. Number two, um, what is the market size mm -hmm. for you? Mm -hmm. So sure, there's a market, but there's a difference between selling a Range Rover and selling a Toyota. Yeah. yeah um, sure. The Range Rover's market is a yeah. handful. Yeah, for the sure. The Toyota... The guy in front of you is always a Toyota. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right? So if you can cater to a bigger base of customers, the better. Because it shows we have a bigger base that we can support in revenue generation. Right. Again, I make the distinction that capital is not charity. Yeah. And most people time, have yeah. the perception that financiers are there to help you. Sure, they will. Mm -hmm. But... How do you prove to them? Remember, I've told you they raise money from people. Mm. How do you prove that it's worthwhile to even their own shareholders? Mm. You have to walk, your, put yourself in their shoes and also help them see the value that they'll be getting. Right. So in terms of the customer base, can we make money as we do this thing? For VC, which invest in the earlier stage, is this business scalable? Can I replicate this business in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, whatever, mm -hmm. right? Can I take this business to Nigeria where there's 200 million people right. as a ready market? Once you can demonstrate some of these fundamentals, then you're okay. And then maybe 
now for the people who did business there's things like barriers to entry mm -hmm. how long will you have that unique competitive advantage of being the only one with that idea before other people come in if it's a market that is easy to be what one doesn't get to be rahisi yeah then it means soon you'll have a competitor maybe in six months and then at that point are okay. you able to make as much money as you've projected right um with six new competitors in a short time frame the best scenarios is where you can prove there's a bit of some higher barriers to entry for mm -hmm. other people so i'll be I have here by myself right yeah, yeah. yeah so and then now it's how do we sell it mm -hmm. right all these investors that we talked about are at different levels and it's sometimes hurtful even to the entrepreneur and you don't know who you're selling to yeah. um if your business is an idea stage don't go to a pe fund yeah, utakuwa sure. disappointed <laughs> but for real we um say you invest in mature businesses so also it's about knowing these audiences and it's also part of the reason i said yes to meeting with you because mm -hmm. it's about time we realize these different groups of people mm -hmm. angel investors are your best bet when you're starting out yeah. because our nanga ma is on my institutional mm -hmm. terms nyingi right. and then vc wa ndo wanaanza kuziingiza but by then utakuwa na some experience if you are found out outside to put in place those mm -hmm. infrastructure governance things mm -hmm. by the time unaenda kwa pe uko tu sawa for them so knowing where you are in business i don't know what time how old feel tv is but yeah. now that you have traction you can show you have products we've yeah. seen you in the movies we've seen the productions you've done yeah now you know where you are you have a product you have a market mm -hmm. you now you know who you can go to you can go to a vc firm you can go to a family uh, mm. angel investment yes. um i don't know about the profitability but if you're profitable then you mm. can start talking to the more mature yeah. investor type so also knowing the investor type that you're looking at will mm. be helpful for you is this knowledge this accessible in developed countries because i feel maybe that's why their businesses just really flourish yeah. because i can tell you for a fact in kenya wa kawaida pale nje hizi vitu unasema hajawahi sikia i think ni pia maturity uh, education system so now that these funds have been here for some time even mm. our own schools business schools are covering this oh, nice. you, okay. for the people who are doing bcom maybe mm -hmm. in the last 10 years they've had units that cover private equity venture capital when a journey mhenga ejezenyo hamko mnafanya hizi hizo camera twende zimeni hizo camera twende yeah ejezetu akokuwa na your yeah. unit kwa right. kwa sure. manake even this asset class was not in africa but yeah. maybe people have done bcom in the last 10 years mm -hmm. pe has been in africa in the last 10 years so now those it's likely those people have this cost units right. so as the uh, as the economies countries mature mm -hmm. they are education system matures so you start having our courses importing mm -hmm. this so that's one the second is um it's a lot dependent on the education system in the schools mm -hmm. uh, universities to put in place the resources to be there yeah. uh, to be available for the students yeah. i attended a program in yale mm -hmm. yale school of management and yeah. uh, it was around social enterprise yeah. how to build a social enterprise which is really entrepreneurship that has an impact and social angle right okay and when i did that program the school itself has an entire portal dedicated to how to pitch how to build a social enterprise how to build a customer base shule yenyewe so ukiingia day one unapopewa vitabu ni nini ni pia unapewa access to a platform where you can find these things hopefully with time our schools yeah. here yeah. and now this is an appeal our schools here can start to do the same right. build a portal case studies um get your alumni to now document the journey of building a business yeah. and then give those to you that maybe you can improve on them and package that for the next generation of students who might be potential entrepreneurs so when my sorry not mine but when a young innovator from Kenya is building their company mm -hmm. and when a young innovator from a developed market is building a company they start almost at a negative the kenyan starts at a negative manake huyu alipo hizo resources akiwa shule maze mwingine eh, ana have sasa kwenda school of youtube yeah. no ndo azipate mm -hmm. sivyo yeah. so you're starting at a disadvantage this person already has templates for everything mm -hmm. by the time you're catching up to them mm -hmm. yeah you know it took right. some time so that also affects how we 
present ourselves. But sometimes it's up to us to educate ourselves and hopefully our institutions of higher learning can start to build these resource platforms so that our young people can access them. Not every entrepreneur goes to school and that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, but then you have to be ready to invest in building yourself to make a case as best as the next person. Mm -hmm. Capital is competitive. Yeah. Um, it goes to the best idea. It mm -hmm. goes to the best person that can manage it. Mm -hmm. So if you can prove to the capital allocator that you are the best person, they will have no problem funding you. And let me preempt you. Not It's not just foreigners that get capital in this market. We have... Of sure. It, mm -hmm. We have Kenyans, I <laughs> okay. can give you names, mm -hmm. that have accessed capital right. in this market. It might have taken them a longer, painful journey, but yeah. yes, they have accessed capital once mm. they figure out how to sell those businesses. And again, those are brilliant businesses for those that you know. Some of them are in the public domain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have really amazing companies in Kenya, uh, backed by Kenyans, yeah. yes, and wow. getting very sweet capital. Um, hundred million dollar kinds of checks. Na ni wake na wako na jina kama yako na yangu. So it's just about knowing how to sell it. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, when 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 you talk about packaging um, myself and companies in Kenya, there's some businesses that thrive in this country that would not look pretty on paper. Kama omse wakuza nini mutura, mm. ama smoky, ama mm. smoky pasua, smota. And man, kuna base, tumeziona tume ziki exist for like 30 years and, and they're profitable. There's a way they can scale because I think kila mtu kenyo kula mutura is pokuwa sti. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, a lot of businesses that thrive in Kenya, like on the higher percentage ni kama hizo. Mm. Like your local shop. Yeah. Um, you know your local kibanda and your local kibanda jumeonge about the the base they can serve yeah. i i guarantee you the local kibandas serve a bigger base than java it's but it's you know possible. it's possible eh mtukao ya mtu yangu atapata funding how do they make themselves pretty and attractive <laughs> so it, it requires funding that understands them so mm -hmm. that is now the place where i start getting passionate about local funding yeah africans for africa Oh, yeah. Kenyans for Kenya. Yeah. Right? For sure. Um, it's only a Kenyan who knows the value of Mutura as a joint. Yeah. A Mutura joint. Serio? Yeah, or a Smoky Pasua as yeah. a joint. Yeah. It's only a Kenyan who knows the market opportunities of a mm -hmm. Smoky Pasua establishment. Yeah. yeah. And unless it's a Kenyan who can fund that, Mzungu mm Manya -hmm. interact na Mutura ita kwa hard small. Yeah. Unanza kum convince. <laughs> True. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, um, it takes people who understand our market to back some of these ideas. Not mm. to say they are not great, mm. but uh, uh, not to say they cannot, but mm. it takes someone who has invested time to yeah. understand the, the local market. Mm. Um, the challenge for that is that, like I said, capital is competitive. So yeah. if you go next to a fintech or after your meeting, it's a fintech who's yeah. speaking fintech language, yeah. global fintech language, yeah. guess what happens? We lose out on that. Yeah, I spoke sure. to someone, he's a Kenyan, mm -hmm. who's an investor, and he told me his best investment to date has been a restaurant. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I guess it's the same kind of establishment mm -hmm. you are referencing. Yeah. It wasn't a Java for sure, mm. but it's a restaurant where the person, this person, the investor, mm. so the market opportunity of this business and said they wanted in and they have not been disappointed yeah. it's probably would have been harder for that restaurant owner to mm. raise a, another form of capital especially mm. foreign yeah right? for sure but they found luckily mm -hmm. a, a kenyan who understands their business model mm -hmm. right um our fundies what mm. one oh one you know, first of all, the good ones, mm -hmm. they charge a premium. Right. And for us, as well as a lot of their customers are going to be African, mm -hmm. African women who want to look good with our African fabrics. Mm -hmm. And we know the price we are willing to pay for that. Mm -hmm. But however, to someone else, especially who's not intimately interacted with that market, at other ni too, fabric design say so sometimes it needs local funding to back these kinds of solutions so that they can achieve the scale that 
they aspire to. And um, thankfully, today I've been in this space for six years and I can say now, with confidence, there's a lot more angels coming from the local Kenyan scene than there were when I started. Yeah. And it's a few things we've gotten, we've seen what has the success it has led in markets like the US, mm -hmm. even we want to replicate it here. There's a lot more young people who are earning a lot, of mo a lot more money that they can have disposable income to support the next generation of entrepreneurs. Right. Um, yeah, and it's picking up really excitingly. Nice. Um, I was at an event yesterday evening and it was a f the launch of a fund. Wow. Uh, a Kenyan started a fund that was 80% funded by Africans. That's what we and need. And so yeah. when your funding <laughs> is funded by Africans, mm -hmm. it means even you as the fund manager have an obligation to back Africans because yeah. your bosses, the money owners, are yeah. like, where are you putting your ma our money in other places, yeah. you see? So once we start to build that ecosystem that way, you get a lot more capital available for the local company. Uh, you, you're so right, because um, when we were building our new business model for our company, uh, just selling films directly to Kenyans, and we've proven the concept has worked twice. Mm. Uh, now going around looking for funding, the biggest challenge I found is there are a lot of funds that fund filmmakers, but all these funds have been based in Europe, US. In Africa, the Arab belt, Morocco, you mm. know, um, and then maybe South Africa. So, and the, the, the disconnect is so big because Hollywood, the hey, Hollywood, a small budget film is like $20 million. That's like a small budget film. And here I'm telling them we need to make our films with fifty thousand dollars and that disconnect. And that's when it hit me. Ah yeah, I actually need we need local people funding local businesses who understand our market. Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, yeah. For Hollywood, twenty million really is small because even yeah. for America, twenty million is a small ticket. America is a big continent sized country of three hundred million people. So you're, you're in Nigeria, uh, okay, but exactly, but <laughs> Nigeria's Hollywood, Nollywood is also yeah, big yeah, budget. Um, yeah, but then it also re it's a reflection of our development. South Africa is very established because South Africa's government put in place measures to promote local content. Mm -hmm. I mm. think I read somewhere once that South Africa actually banned foreign music in the nineties. Wow. which is why we have an established South African beat, mm. South African music houses yeah. and related uh, film industries. Yeah. Because they they didn't. Yeah. You go to a club today and I say they're playing quite throughout. Oh, yeah. Right? For sure. For sure. Um, Sisi, until you hear Kina Notorious B.I.G., uh, the night has not shikad. Yeah. So that's the, the distinction. And because they planted those seeds way back in the 90s, now mm -hmm. the industry had to create opportunity to produce for that need mm. and now because there was an industry creating for a need there were people to back that need right yeah so sometimes it takes government interventions um it's something that we also push a lot mm. for that the government makes an allocation whether it's for market or funding resources so that we create a need so like if i use the local entertainment scene what happened when they insisted on a certain percent has to be local content. You have that number, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, it motivated people to create room mm -hmm. for local content, content. production and yeah. by effect created a market for you. Oh, yeah, and because sure. that happened, then there's someone willing to fund mm -hmm. um, the business. Right. But we shouldn't give up. Um, I've seen a lot more funding going even into entertainment now. Um, awesome. I mean, yeah. it's still coming from the obvious markets, Nigeria, yeah. South Africa. Mm -hmm. But with time, I think as the Kenyan ecosystem matures its entertainment landscape, mm -hmm. we'll start to see value. Right. Um, I think it's also for you to also communicate how this space can make money. Because yeah. for us, yeah, show me the plan. Show me the money. Show me the plan to make money. Yeah. And then uh, we can work the journey together. Awesome. Um, you've been at the helm of EAVCA for six years. Yep. Um, how was that? You know, first of all, this is an ecosystem that was non-existent. I, I think you coming into that space when private equity and funding was not big in, in Kenya and in Africa in general, and just what does it take to lead such an organization for you personally? Yeah. So EAVCA turns 10 this year. 
which means it was yeah for four years old by yeah. the time I came in right. um, it was there uh, the initial days we were very focused on building our own ecosystem mm -hmm. getting more fund managers in Kenya mm -hmm. established here so that they could build our membership base right and then around five years ago we became intentional about building the ecosystem so we realized that in as much as we have the money if we don't support enterprise and advisory services we have nowhere to take that money so now we started outreach for working with business owners mm. like what i'm doing now right? right um what does it take for the last six years i think my biggest driver has been my passion for getting africa as a source of production right. and not a consumer right. so everyone talks about how africa is the next largest market we will yeah. have by 2050 the largest population in the world yeah but people talk about that as this is a market where we can send our product mm. so for me my portion and my stand is africa can also produce for the world namkikata tutakula do we will be the largest <laughs> producers in the yeah. uh, will be the largest population so yeah. Yeah. let us build our story in a way that we have a seat at the table right. that's been always my driver and now working backwards is to see what can i do at a personal level to right. start instituting some reforms whether it's in building markets selling our story changing policy right. um, to create that environment that african producers mm -hmm. including yourselves right. are confident enough to take over the world so that's been my it's a personal mission you know you 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 sound soft spoken but you exhume a lot of confidence mm. have you always been this confident no <laughs> right but you've been at the helm of a big organization yeah how was that like how did you build up your confidence to this level <laughs> i think therapy oh for real okay uh, i yeah. guess <laughs> how often is therapy mentioned in this your classes <laughs> oh man every time <laughs> right every so time, i yeah. am another champion of therapy right um when i was young so a bit of background for me i was raised by a single mother right and we were i guess a middle income house and mm. she worked at the post office so okay. she worked for the government in, at the post office yeah you can decide how much people at the post office are paid, are paid. especially now yeah when no one uses it yeah um and as a single mother one i watched her drive mm -hmm. she had to feed her children herself it was the 90s there was a perception around single mothers and she had to fight the stereotype yeah um yeah. so she became a very tough person mm -hmm. and that i guess was ingrained in me from the house right right to be tough um, but then i also had an identity crisis i went to boarding school mm -hmm. and uh, when i went to boarding every visiting day people would like babako ko api so uh, yeah you develop yeah. some kind of inferiority complex because right. yeah it's the 90s again yeah yeah so but as i got into corporate especially i remember i needed to so yeah sorry um that kind of inferiority complex carried mm -hmm. through maybe in my initial years at the workplace and mm -hmm. i felt like i needed to prove myself throughout. Right. so i was always a very exemplary staff mm. maybe employee yeah uh, because i my work has to prove me, yeah. me and yeah. what i do but then it, it got to some point and through therapy i learned i can be enough by myself yeah right and when i show up in my authentic self mm -hmm. not caring what the world thinks of you that maybe that childhood trauma of baba kwa it yeah. doesn't have to affect you in the workplace you're now in your mid 20s you right. can be who you are mm -hmm. you don't have to overwork yourself to mm -hmm. prove that you are worthy then you start to think of life differently through mm -hmm. but so it was therapy and coaching um that was one and then i had a few people who believed in me right incidentally men wow. um so i've always talked about sponsors not like that <laughs> the other one <laughs> having a sponsor oh, yeah. who a man not a man who <laughs> but, but having someone who can hold your hand right. and mention your name in rooms uh, right. and also cause correct at the end of the day the biggest voices in big rooms are gonna be men and until we get to a place where it's 50 50 or the gender mm -hmm. um, thing is skewed mm. you cannot do away without a man as a sponsor yeah. but not that one yeah. the other one that's his coach <laughs> as a coach <laughs> mentor okay yeah. yeah so i had a few people who held my hand and 
probably saw my potential maybe even before I did. Yeah. Um uh, But then I was also a curious person. I've always been curious. Mm. I I like studying, I like reading books and I just like consuming knowledge. Right. So that also helps me. Um yeah. sometimes negatively. I was once fired by my boss and then he brought me back <laughs> because I challenged him. For teach laws of power. Uko umesoma hiyo? Never. Excuse me, don't assume. Excuse me, don't assume. Hey, don't 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 appear smarter than your boss or something. Hi. Yeah, ni lilan the hard way, but it's also part of growing yeah, up. So yeah. it's been a journey. Wow. No one, no leader is born overnight. There's something I've picked up from just uh what you've talked about um the more ladies now coming into these boardrooms and you know, we're trying to fill in that gap and it's something of seen you talk about passionately yeah. the feminine energy in the workplace ah. yeah. yeah talk to me about that so um i think it's also pas- part of me owning my identity and mm-hmm. coming from a place where i felt that i needed to prove myself mm-hmm. that was not always working in my favor because i was adopting a persona that's not me mm-hmm. i am a gentle soft spoken person right. i prefer relational engagements versus yeah being Top. man yeah. up right yeah. and i have found at least in my role even as ceo i get a lot more done i get a lot more accomplished when i use my authentic relational and get skills or the soft spoken feminine person versus mm. the man up yeah. right yeah. so um sadly we are also told to act like men i don't know if it's still the case this this but back then as mm. i was coming up it was yeah. uh, you have to do what the man does twice as better. Mm. Oh really? You have to just do what the woman does. Yeah. Perfectly. Oh yeah, for sure. Forget what the man does. Yeah. Right? Um at the end of the day, men change the bulb. <laughs> Actually I can, but yeah. <laughs> not when you're here. I will I will default to letting yeah. the man do what he can and then right. I show up as the woman mm-hmm. because I know what I can bring to the table as a woman perfectly. Right. I attempt to do what you can do as a man, I'll do it half as good. For sure. Yeah, so sure. and it's trying to nurture that to the next generation right. i got a lot of coaches like you said mm-hmm. mine were men mm-hmm. um because i didn't see a lot of women offering not offering but even being there for me mm-hmm. in that way i have vowed to be the chain breaker i will right. give myself to the next crop of women so that at minimum they have someone right so it's also another thing of me living the world a better place than i found it oh. man that's That's amazing. Uh cuz now is that I don't and I don't know why it's getting that way. It, it's more of competition nowadays between men and women. I'm mm. I'm like we we will always be different yeah. and we all bring different energies into the room and how about just combine and find ways we can coexist and yeah. you know win. Mm. Right. Man, that's amazing. Yeah. I I will say something else. It's, yeah. Really I went to boarding school when I was young, but mm. um that instilled in me discipline. Mm. So time keeping is a big deal for me yeah and yeah. it was in green way back then right and for nan school nans are no joke hey you know you look paramilitary so whoa, i am whoa, essentially whoa. a paramilitary student and uh incidentally my favorite books to read are military books so discipline is my guide and my north star right and if i apply myself with discipline mm-hmm. everything else falls in line right. um and i think that's also something i t- that has helped me as a leader people can count on me to, right. to do what i say i will do mm-hmm. because it's part of what um i live for hmm? yeah and then just the military thing do you do you go to the shooting range um, no i can't stand guns ah okay so so unapenda military no penda guns i like their i like their yeah. order right. i like the respect of authority mm-hmm. and mostly the strategy thinking Right. Yeah. So Okay. You should read more military books. No, no, They I are do. fantastic. I, I, yeah, uh, I do. I and do. they're time keeping. And 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 <laughs> just I, and honestly I feel like business is war when and and you need to walk into business with a strategy just like yeah. the military. Yeah. And I've seen there are no shortcuts and you just need to put in the work and strategy for your business to yeah. be successful. So yes, I relate a lot to the military. Yeah. Hata yako mka 5:30 ikoenda gym. Manzi. Si watu tunataka. Iko na background in those days. In those days. Yeah, reading the military. Okay. Yeah. 
what's your day like from morning to evening usually <laughs> see now you know one half <laughs> Watch up ones <laughs> for those ones who don't know. <laughs> the first time. Right, yeah. so I wake up and yeah. go to the gym and then I roughly around what time? Gosh. Mm. So so <laughs> choma. So 6 6 a.m. Yeah, I'll try and go to the gym. Right. 6. Yeah, okay. Um and then I I'll do it for about one and a half hours. So mm. by 7:30 I'm done. Head to the office. I I a lot of because I run a network. Mm-hmm. A big part of my day mm-hmm. is talking to people right um but an ordinary day would be if i don't have an external meeting talking mm-hmm. to other people mm-hmm. i will settle in the office try and read mm-hmm. industry stuff so not necessarily the local newspaper but mm-hmm. what happened within our industry the investment industry read it about it in kenya africa and the developed markets things like what the res- the reserve bank has said about the fed you know because mm-hmm. that has a trickle down effect on emerging markets like ours um and then try and make a few catch up calls mm-hmm. so if i don't have a meeting set um government is a big stakeholder for investing oh, so yeah, for sure. try and catch up with a regulator here and they find out eh what mm-hmm. are you guys thinking mm-hmm. budget iko karibu mnaona vitu zinakaje um catch up with a few of the people in the ecosystem mm-hmm. if someone's done a deal recently what informed it what right. not um and how can we help as a network okay. um and then there's lots to do around policy papers mm-hmm. so if the day is not too hectic i can work on maybe policy papers that we want to present to different um governments because mm-hmm. our organization represents five markets so wow. beyond kenya we're in ethiopia tanzania rwanda and ethiopia uh, and Tan- ethiopia tanzania uganda rwanda and Kenya. Kenya yeah yeah um so catch up with policy around mm-hmm. the the ecosystem there's always stuff to be done and right. then um in the evening i will go home and feed my dogs <laughs> <laughs> how many dogs do you have <laughs> Three. Three. yes oh my goodness yeah i don't watch tv during the week so i will catch up with uh, some reading right and then i sleep early i try to sleep by 9:30 don't you make a gym by by that <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That, that's so you don't or oh, washing your tv during the week manzi nataka okay no siezi kwa kama but you see your industry yako no you mean mimi na mkasubui kusoma magazeti industry yako ina require uko kwa tv check out content ni right i hope i didn't offend no 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 no, no. <laughs> no for for me um, we um we we live in a world right now where um we are constantly getting um you know we're always on our phone mm. so you know just to find someone who can stay off technology because there's some excitement and some dopamine you you feed your brain just from being on yeah. your phone throughout being yeah. on the screen and i'm finding that more and more people are lacking interpersonal skills like people can't have this conversation for this long without looking at their phone. I'm on social media. I'm right. on LinkedIn quite a bit because yeah. it's a platform we use for, for sure. work. For sure. Uh Twitter. Yeah. I have mixed feelings about Twitter. I think it's very harsh, but it's also a good place for knowledge. So Twitter ni nenda ngoko nikiwa in the right frame of mind. Singa ngi anytime. Then Instagram is just that is the one that I need a timer and it it closes itself <laughs> right because <laughs> of i can go into rabbit holes yeah. um but i i think it's if you pursue that which you care for mm-hmm. so for me i i really care about learning and right. knowledge of things i'm now reading around clim- uh, about climate change mm-hmm. and because mm-hmm. i want to know more about that so i will invest more time there right uh, because i also think it's helpful for the work i do but i also wanted to say no two days of mine are the same There's days yeah. when I spent talking talking to people. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you show up gava has someone due to parliament to talk about this. Mm-hmm. And then you have to do an investor mm-hmm. meet up and around the other yeah. Your day is pretty packed. Yes it is. On on a on a regular day. Yes. Um how are you striking the work life balance? You wake up at 4. <laughs> <laughs> for your yeah, person we 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 can't afford to speak to your person because this, uh, your day looks just crazy um it's not really uh, it's not well um from just my kidogo experiences um and talking to a lot of people 
uh, they always say you know for for your business or your enterprise to be successful there are certain sacrifices you have to make yeah. and i've always found that the sacrifices lie on the personal side so there's a lot of sacrifices when it comes to how how much time you spend with family mm. even just meeting up with your significant other is a problem you know yes. yeah <laughs> So for you how do you strike that balance? Um so let's see if it's there if something like that even exists I don't I think, think it does. Uh, there's a, a lady um the current head of PepsiCo mm-hmm. forget her name. Um she said balance is fictitious you will not succeed in everything at the same time but right. you you will succeed at different levels so mm-hmm. for her she gave the example of there was a period she needed to grow her career mm-hmm. her family suffered and then there's a period she really invested in her her family, her family. but by then she had made it so yeah. it's okay yeah. um yeah but then the workplace kind of did not see her as much mm-hmm. uh for me i think i try so social relationships like you say yeah. are, are a hard one yeah to yeah. show up for a significant other mm-hmm. they don't understand why you have to go to every cocktail every <laughs> evening but you have yeah. to go because you're an st- industry yeah. Yeah. yeah you're an ecosystem enabler right. mm-hmm. yeah so that is i mean it's a challenge mm. but um, so one of the things i do is on sundays i don't check my work Okay. Um I also don't so. check social media on Sundays. So Sundays awesome. is the day I indulge in TV and sleep. Awesome. Awesome. Sasa kwa chilia. watch content here to do. Yes. Yeah. So Sundays I watch TV. Right. Um Saturdays I try and do more personal stuff, hiking, mm-hmm. being outdoors. I like that. Yeah. So I'll do that on Saturdays. Right. And then Sunday is church. I'm always at I'm I'm I love being in church. Oh. So but after church i don't check my emails i don't check instagram i don't go mm-hmm. on linkedin mm-hmm. so if i'm after church i go home and re- rest right. i'll turn on the telly chances are i'll fall asleep in 30 minutes but <laughs> any part yeah. of your life it, it, it takes practice to watch <laughs> tv for long <laughs> yeah. yeah so but yeah so i guess the weekends are my days right. saturday is more being outdoors that fills me mm-hmm. uh it nourishes me just hiking yeah. physical right. um pressure and getting out of my head that that's what i do the hiking for right and then sunday we na god we na god tiangu mm-hmm. being in first world countries and being around all these people with money that has not shaken your faith in any way why should it i don't know it seems like in developed countries the more money or the richer people get the need for church and faith Kinda it's a deep. personal thing. Right. I, and I don't force it on anyone. Mm-hmm. It's a personal thing. Yeah. But faith mm-hmm. is also a key part of who I am, so. Right. That's cool. You've had many experiences. You travel a lot. What's your stranger than fiction story? What's that one thing that if you told people they wouldn't believe but it kind of changed your life? <laughs> it didn't change my Oh my god. <laughs> it didn't change your life. No oh, because I have never been asked that so I don't know what to answer there. Ah, oh, okay. Um there's always a first time. Gosh, what? Yeah. Uh, wow. So, something you look back and you're like, how did that happen? How did that, that happen that way? And it it really set you off on a motion. <laughs> oh my god, I yeah, don't Take your know. time, take your time. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I'm drawing blanks. Wow. Mm-hmm. Something that changed my life. Um it doesn't have to be like spectacular, but um yeah, I don't I, I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs and and maybe successful. I'm boring. No, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> you're not. It's um sometimes they, they sit back What and is like, yours? Ay 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 ay. It's a sad. Mm. Mm. Um <laughs> But it's something I've mentioned before but um I got the biggest contract I've ever gotten in my life because of the perfume I was wearing. Oh yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> you, 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 okay, I've yeah. seen it on your interview. Yeah, okay, so yeah, yeah, I mean it was and 
prior to that, I had never been into perfumes and scents, but my wife really, really is into scents. And she actually right. forced me to buy that particular scent and it was a lot of money. I was like, guy, you mm, mm. And it's what landed me one yeah. of my biggest jobs. And I've always, so I've mine always wasn't paid. when I was traveling, but right. the one moment I had that what yeah. was, um, I was driving on Thika Road, mm -hmm. sitting in traffic and I got a call from a lady in South Africa. And she said, is this Eva? And I said, yes, who am I speaking to? She gave me her name. I can't remember it right now. Mm -hmm. And then she said, um, I have a group of NBA basketballers coming to East Africa and they would like to understand the market. So the NBA has this thing they call the Africa Summer Basketball, Summer Africa League, something. But so, every year in summer after the NBA season is done, mm -hmm especially African-American basketballers will come to the continent and they have these Africans, you know, there's Africans in the mm. NBA, like yeah. from Senegal, South Sudan. Yes, yes. So they'll have an, an Africa versus world mm. match. Right. At the time it was being held in SA. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this, this year it will be in Rwanda. Okay. So anyway, they come mm -hmm. for summer right. to do that as their way of maybe promoting basketball in Africa. Mm -hmm. So they also spend time to understand Africa and the economic opportunities. Mm -hmm. And that lady had hosted them in SA mm -hmm. and they were coming up to wow. Nairobi. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> me, I don't watch basketball. Yeah. Once it comes at three in the morning. <laughs> Yeah. I don't get it. You're on a UFC. Uh, to watch UFC. You wake up at 3 a.m. to watch. Yeah, yeah. In, in, what is that? UFC in full. Ultimate fighting champion. Easy mix martial arts things. So basketball, the real diehards wake up. Then me, me, I'm not that person. So yeah. that lady called and said, do you have a group of basketballers coming in Nairobi and I was given your name because you do this work with the AVCA. Would you be open to talk to them? Like, okay, yeah, send me their names. So yeah. me, I don't even know basketballers. Yeah. So I sent, I, this, she sent me the list on email. I'm sitting, I can't remember, I was sitting there. <laughs> so she sends me the list i'm like okay some of these people i know but i know them as celebrities i don't know them as mm -hmm. and now that i have a chance to speak to these people, people yeah. so i sent the the name to a, a friend who is a basketball fan mm -hmm. what do i need to say and yeah. he was like what do you mean you're talking to this? To can this. I come? Can I be a PA? Yeah. So that was a, a bit of a surreal moment. And when I walked into the room and first of all, they gave me audience. <laughs> first, yeah, and these towering giants, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so. A name drop. Twambia. Twambia, a few of the names that are on that list. Um, and to this day, I think I've met the person four more times. Luol Deng, who's the former. Mm. He's a South Sudanese. Yeah. Very passionate about Africa. Right. Um he played for Chicago Bulls, Miami Heat, yeah. LA Lakers, and then he retired as a Minnesota Timberwolves. Okay. So clearly, una jua better says so like, <laughs> I didn't even know who he was. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. eh? so I sent it to my friend. It's like, yeah. what do you mean? Can I come? Yeah. And until I showed up, I'm like, wait, I see you people on the shade room. Mm. Come back. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that's your reference point. Oh man, Kumbe. yeah, Kumbe, I'm someone, even me. And then, yeah, that was a, a bit man, surreal. That's, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. It's an interesting one, yes, yeah, it's so dope. Um, and the fact that I had content that they were willing to, to, to listen to, and that's amazing. Um, it, it's it's interesting how we we call it imposter syndrome. You never think that you have a lot to offer, yeah. And until you sit in a room and yeah. people are listening to you and they're keen and like, oh, oh, you know, <laughs> yeah. you care for what I do. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. At this point, I usually just ask for like your mantra, like uh, that that. That, that anthem that you wake up to every day. Anthem. And before you answer that, just, is there anything you'd want to tell the business community? Maybe you feel I've left out. Um, I will add the second part. Okay. I, I would just like to reach out to the entrepreneur mm -hmm. made in Kenya for Kenya and so for the world, let's say. Yeah, for the the entrepreneur who wakes up every day to strive and do something because they're passionate about it. Mm -hmm. 
we hear you we we want to do more with you right um they can probably use this platform to reach out to us right um and let's see how we can work that journey with them okay yeah Right. I am a strong believer in Africa producing for the world. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whether you're producing in tech, in media, mm -hmm. in manufacturing, right. fashion, right. I'm a believer in Africa producing for the world. And I will always be supportive for that. And any way we can lend a hand, I'm happy to. Awesome. Um, yeah. Yes. What's your mantra? I have a few. Gosh. Okay. Yeah. Please stand I think... Yeah. Um, wow. No, they have all disappeared. But <laughs> my, the one thing I live by is, I think it, they've also applied differently in different stages of my life. When I was in the growing, building myself space, mm -hmm. when I, actually when I was in uni, I keep using my story, yeah, but when poor. I was in uni, I mean, I in last year of uni, mm -hmm. a gentleman gave me a book. It was the autobiography of Abraham Lincoln. Right. And he, there's a, a, a thing that struck me with Abraham Lincoln. He was the six, 16th president of the U.S. Mm -hmm. He had tried four times before that and failed. And there's a quote, he says, I will prepare and someday my chance will come. Mm -hmm. And that has stuck with me. Yeah. Because even as I built myself professionally, there were times when I had no. Mm -hmm. There were times I was told I'm too young. There were times you yeah. look like a secretary, not the CEO. Right. But... As long as I always showed up my authentic self, mm -hmm. well prepared, because right. you're not showing up with hot air, mm -hmm. I will prepare and someday my chance will come. Now I have this opportunity to transform the continent. Mm -hmm. I will say my chance has come. Right. So that was one. Um, there's my favorite, ver not a verse, but my quote it's mm -hmm. a long lengthy quote the mm -hmm. man in the arena by theodore roosevelt mm -hmm. the man in the arena says it's not the critic who counts it's not the person who says the doer of deeds could have done better it's not the person who is on the sidelines saying the doer of the deeds could have done, done better. better the credit belongs to the man in the arena yeah. whose face is marred by dust and sweat who strives and fails valiantly but who knows there's no joy without, oh, I'm paraphrasing, who, mm -hmm. without being valiant and mm -hmm. showing up. You should be an actress. Man. Yeah. Not a foot role, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So that, uh, yeah. Every time you show up, mm -hmm. it's it's easy to criticize from the sidelines. Oh, yeah, for sure. But what are you doing? Whether right. Even in governance, mm -hmm. you don't like the leadership, show up in the policy space. You want to change leadership, show up in the policy space. And, mm -hmm. Maybe push your favorite at a company MCA, mm -hmm. be out in the street helping them campaign. Because mm -hmm. if you really believe in change, it does not help to be on the sidelines complaining. Credit belongs to the person who's on the arena. I have a lot of respect for any politician who's tried and failed. Right. Because at least they tried. Right. So that's the second one. And then the third one was actually the success card my mother gave me for my KCP. <laughs> but it had a, a quote that said the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is a little extra. Yeah. Yeah. But that stayed in me. Yeah. And and it's so accurate. Yes. It is so accurate. And we leo me pigua the end. The end. <laughs> 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 Oh man, thank you so much for your time and your nuggets and your wisdom. And <laughs> no. And and that's and that's why I, I really started this conversation because in real life by the conversations are never structured. Yeah. Yeah. If whenever you sit down with someone, mm. and so I never like structure. We'll start with business, we'll go to personal, we'll go to your dogs, we'll come back to business. Yeah. And that's and that's real life and that's real conversation. And you are amazing and the information you've given us is just amazing. I hope there's an email you can give me or or yeah, your website pass. 
for the, the association. Yeah, yes, yeah. I can give that so for dr- more information around yeah. funds and the work we do. Right. Um, yes. Sure. Is, there, is it even possible to get like a list of funds? They are available funds? there. They are available. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. We can set that up in the description uh, on YouTube and uh, Facebook. Yeah, keep subscribing, keep liking our pages on Facebook and YouTube, Becoming CEO. Also, uh, just a big shout out and uh, to Long or Not Place, Manze. I know I here, this beautiful apartment. Uh, come check out this place, Manze. They have amazing rates, amazing apartments. And thank you so much, Long or Not Place. This place is beautiful. At least guess what you can feel like you can feel like you can Manze, to Yeah, thank you. And that's it, man. Classy Meisha. Ding, 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 ding.